why random walks and the efficient market hypothesis fail. Some economists imagine a world where stock markets follow an unpredictable path, where no one can tell if the market is going to go up or down. This is a random walk, and it's the basis for the efficient market hypothesis. It was supposed to make pricing of financial instruments much more accurate, but as we'll discover, real world markets have hidden complexity which can't be captured by such simple analysis. In today's video, we're delving into why the traditional random walk models fall short in capturing how financial markets really work. Here we're going to examine what a random walk is and why you might want to use it for financial modeling. And we're going to discuss a topic of great importance to understanding stock market behavior. That is clustered volatility. But we're also going to address the elephant in the room. Why do so many traders hate random walk models? And ultimately, why the random walk model fails. A random walk is a mathematical concept that describes a path or a series of steps taken at random, where each step is determined by chance. It is used to represent a process that evolves over time in a way that is unpredictable. In a simple random walk, we pick a starting point and at each time step, move either to the left or right with an equal probability. Then we repeat this process and continue over whatever number of steps we wish to take. Random walks have applications in various domains, including physics, finance, biology, and computer science to model processes that involve some degree of randomness or uncertainty, such as the movement of particles in a fluid, the movement of stock prices, or the behavior of animals. I seem to remember being taught this in terms of thinking about a drunk wandering home where each step would be taken at random as they stumbled left or right. I suspect that that image isn't used much anymore. Why are random walks hated? In finance, a random walk is often used to model the behavior of asset prices over time. The idea is that the price of a financial instrument, such as a stock or a currency, undergoes random movements, making future price changes unpredictable. The random walk hypothesis assumes that the price at any given time is the result of the cumulative effect of a series of random, independent events. This also reflects the equally hated efficient market hypothesis. Effectively, this says that asset prices already fully reflect all available information. Therefore, the price of an asset at any given time is the true and fair price it should be already. It should never be undervalued or overvalued, as it already incorporates any information about potential future growth or potential downturn. Anything else is unknowable. Hence, an investor could only be guessing about what would happen in the future. You can imagine this as little pieces of information arriving each day, buffeting the market either up or down. And each time the price adjusts, it adjusts immediately and completely to that news so that tomorrow's price will stay the same level if no new news came in. People who actively trade on financial markets hate this for an obvious reason. It implies that it is impossible to consistently achieve higher than average returns by analyzing past prices and trends, since future price movements would already be taken into account, given all the available information. Therefore, they could only beat the market by luck, and someone who simply bought and held stock would do on average just as well. The disdain for this idea particularly applies to people who rely on so-called technical analysis methods to trade, as the concept of technical analysis assumes that historical price patterns can be used to make predictions about the future. Essentially, the efficient market hypothesis asserts that such people are deluding themselves that they can beat the market. But what use are random walk models anyway? Whether or not you believe markets can or can't be predicted based on their past patterns of behavior, there are really important uses for models based on random walk analysis. In particular, for options pricing. As many of you know, an options derivative contract is a financial instrument that gives its holder the right to buy or sell 
an underlying asset at a predetermined price in a predetermined time frame. The price of an options contract is affected by various factors, such as the time until expiration, but importantly to our discussion, also the volatility of the asset. Volatility refers to the degree to which the price of an asset fluctuates, providing insight into the level of risk or uncertainty associated with that asset. Higher volatility implies larger and more frequent price changes, indicating greater market uncertainty, while lower volatility suggests more stable and predictable price movements. Clearly, the degree of volatility is critical in determining the likelihood of reaching a given price level in the future within some specified time frame. Thus, the concept of a random walk is a key method upon which traditional options pricing models are based. This approach has been highly successful, but also had some significant failures. So who was right? Let's explore this by making a simple representation of a random walk model following the methods we outlined earlier. Here we'll simulate the value of a stock, which will move up and down according to the flip of a coin. Already this looks amazingly like a financial market chart, but we can easily see that this approach has some limitations. The price just goes up and down by one unit each turn. We can make this more realistic by making the degree of movement up or down a random variable. Once we do this, the simulation starts to look like a really good representation of a financial market. And when we compare this with data from a real stock, at a casual look, we can't really see any difference. But there's a clever trick to show that the real and synthetic data do not behave in the same way. And for this, we need to analyze what's going on with the volatility of this data. An easy method to get at volatility is to take the daily price change and square it. This allows us to easily visualize the volatility in both the real and synthetic data and compare them. When we do this, we uncover a curious feature which differentiates the two sets of data. We expect, due to the way a random walk is constructed, that the volatility should be reasonably constant over time, and only grows or reduces in proportion to price movement. But we see that by contrast for a real stock, there are clusters where the volatility is high, while most of the time it is relatively low. It's as if volatility can only be high in brief bursts. What this reflects is volatility clustering. Financial markets typically experience periods of high and low volatility, whereas the random walk hypothesis assumes constant volatility, which is not consistent with what we're seeing here. It's really important to understand that you can't have volatility clustering under the assumption of a traditional random walk model. In order for volatility clustering to occur, there needs to be a relationship between the neighboring values in the time series, which implies that future market movements do depend on what preceded them, as technical analysts claim. An example is the 1987 stock market crash. On October 19, 1987, global stock markets experienced a sudden and severe decline after the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped by over 22%. The short time frame and the scale of the crash would be beyond what a simple random walk model would be capable of handling. Here again, we see a clustering of volatility around the event. This is really important in the context of calculating the true value of stock options, since a random walk would not have considered such an extreme series of movements. To summarize, Methods which take into account clustered volatility are a far better way to model financial markets. The existence of clustered volatility proves that markets are not perfectly efficient and invalidates traditional random walk models because by definition, if volatility is clustered in time, individual prices can't be independent of each other. Given these two things, the efficient market hypothesis can't be valid, at least not completely so.